Hello, my friend. Stay a while and listen. What's going on YouTube, it's Filthy and we're back with another video. Today we're taking a look at the Season 27 Strongest Solo Casual Build, the Strafe Impaled Demon Hunter. We are crushing GR120 in 3 minutes, uh, totally solo. I will show you how to change it for group setup, so if you want to learn how to DPS, um, this is definitely your best option. Farming 120 solo on you know under 2 days into the season is just absolutely godly. We'll be able to fry the Paragon. Uh, and I'll show you everything. We'll go through every piece of gear. We'll talk about every single roll. Uh, we'll talk about where the build will go. Uh, I do think we'll be able to get this up to 125 speeds. Maybe a little bit past that. Uh, you know, Maybe it'll get 127, maybe 130. Uh, we'll talk about where I've got some room to grow. Um, but 1, 2, 3 and 4 minutes is still pretty fast. The game is really laggy at the moment just because of the server pressures. So the 119s that I've put in the background. I'm afraid might be a little jumpy, um, but yeah, we'll go we'll go through everything. Uh, the character's not fully orged yet. It's pretty well optimized, but there are a couple areas that we can still get some juice out of, so we will go over those. Uh, and yeah, you'll just have a lot of fun playing. This is really easy to play, uh, which makes it just absolutely perfect for solo casual XP. Uh, right now, the main thing obviously is the shadow set. We're going to go for five pieces because we're going to take the mantle of channeling shoulders. Uh, this is going to give us a bit more damage. Now, two piece, we get extra damage for having a melee weapon. We, of course, take the Carlay's point, uh, so that covers that. On the four piece, Shadow Power gains every rune, so we do get uh, damage reduction, we get move speed, and we also get life per hit. Now, there is a snapshot mechanic with the life per hit. I don't have it uh, because I haven't found a life per hit potion since I heard about this. Uh, and the way this snapshot works, very easy. All you do is when you lose some life and you're about to pop your potion, pop it and then immediately hit your shower, shadow power again and that will add the uh, life uh, per hit from your potion to your shadow power and it'll just snapshot it and keep it. Um, so that's a little area that I can improve. Uh, on the six piece bonus you get an ungodly amount of damage whilst you are chucking impales, which is brilliant. Carle's points obviously gives you regen so as you as you automatically strafe with the sanctified power uh, you'll get resource back for casting strafe um, you don't need to manually cast impale you can do um, on rift guardians to try and eke out a bit more damage you don't need to for speeds um, but you know again it, it's just for your information really so this is your first starting thing you're going to use an angelic crucible on at your Kale's point so impale gets a modifier up to 375 so very important to max that out as much as you can uh, ideal rolls on this are damage percent uh, and then you don't need cooldown because you will have enough from other pieces uh, you don't need main stat you don't need vitality a little bit with the guardian set initially they do give you quite a bit of value um, but elite damage is probably going to be preferable uh, so if you can get that that would be handy the other modifier comes from the holy point shot so impale chucks extra knives uh, dealing up to 100 percent damage now mine's low it's 81 percent so i can guess another 10 or 15 percent worth of gas out of this if i got this up to 100 but the thing about this quiver even though it's non-ancient it is practically perfect otherwise because it's got five percent damage of nearly 20 uh, it's got main stat which you're going to be stuck with probably uh, attack speed of 20 percent it's got crit chance of 10 percent and it's also got impale damage of 14 percent so ideally you want one of these that is sanctified because uh, it's just gonna be really hard to get an ancient one with all these rolls Sanctified one of these would give you a hundred percent modifier on the impale. It would then give you uh, all of the all of these stats exactly. Basically, is pretty much what you want. Getting a Carlay's point is not that difficult. So there's only two daggers in the Demon Hunter loot pool. So to get yourself a better one, you just simply are gonna basically spend all of your blood, um, all of your mats upgrading daggers. So you can either find them on the floor doing T16s, uh, or you can just basically craft load at Hadrig. And whenever you've got enough mats, you're going to do this every other go, roughly, you're going to get Carlay's points. One in every 10, you're going to get ancient Carlay's points, one in every 20, because obviously you're going to have to separate out the Lord Greenstone fan. If you get a nice ancient one uh, with really good stats, you're going to keep it. Obviously, you're hoping to hit a primal one, uh, and then eventually you can transfer off onto a sanctified holy point shot, because as I say, this is, this is going to take me ages to get a better quiver, even though it's not ancient. Uh, we're also going to take the Guardian set. I think this is just absolutely amazing early on. 
it's such a, a huge addition to the game. Uh, so I've got 23.5k main stat. If I take off a Guardian piece, it goes down to 13.5k. Uh, similarly for the Life Pool, we've got 1.7 million with the Guardians on, and it goes down to 700,000 without it. Uh, so that really just showed just the absolute mega toughness and mega damage that we're getting from this. Eventually, we might transition off this onto all guilds, but realistically, I'm not sure how much more you're going to get, and it's going to potentially be at a much later Paragon level. Uh, so for the moment, I'm quite happy. I would recommend orging it, um, just simply because with it being craftable, it's quite easy to target farm uh, the Guardian set. You obviously need the plans. You're going to do lots of bounties, and then you're going to go uh, and do Hadrig, and you're just going to keep going until you get yourself a nice ancient, ancient one. Uh, that you can slap an augment on this isn't perfect i wouldn't want armor for instance so you want dex vit life percent uh, and all res probably be my preferred choice uh, but it is uh, what it is focus and restraint so we activate the first part by hitting with a generator we're going for grenades cluster fire i think just because it's got a decent aoe but any generator you want to use it's absolutely fine and then you obviously activate uh, the other part with the with the strafe now, in terms of the focus and restraint, double crit uh, is going to be preferable. And past that, I've got main stat on both. Ideally, you want ancient on both of these with damage and double crit. That would be the dream. Obviously, quite hard to get uh, those early on. But again, that would be some more juice for me. Uh, we've got a squirt. So when the bonus is up, we do double damage. Uh, and other than that, we take double incoming damage. So again, that's why the Guardian set really does help us out a lot. Uh, for here, fire, double crit socket, uh, again, very early in the season, so I can get a lot of juice if I replace that dex roll with a 10% crit chance roll, that would give me a lot of damage, um, I just haven't found one as of yet. Uh, we've got a Taguk so that we do more damage whilst we channel, we get more armor as well as we channel, so that's nice, this is rank 122, uh, obviously the goal is to get this up to 150 eventually, um, but for the moment 122. Even if you're doing 120 speeds, you can get all of your gems to 122 uh, fairly easily. Zeiss Stone of Vengeance, the further away we are, the more damage we do. Uh, quite nice for the Rift Guardian, you can kind of like go quite far away uh, and blast it. I mean, look at this lag, not good. Uh, you can take Trapped here, uh, you would just, you know, again, do a little bit less damage at range, but a little more damage overall. Sorry, we've got Trapped, I mean Bane of the Powerful. If you do Bane of the Powerful, it's, it's more consistent. Uh, because it's just that flat damage but obviously i think you're losing a little bit uh, and zeiss does give a bit more and we do of course have the bane of the trap uh, for more damage we proc that uh, with the call the weak thrill of the hunt combo so we um, do more damage against slowed or chilled and then we activate the slow chill with the thrill of the hunt um, if you want to go close and personal you can uh, take off one of those passives the one that actually slows and you can then simply um, add back in the uh, powerful instead of the Zyze and you can pick yourself another passive uh, but I think this is probably the optimal way to play so this is what we're going to go for. Uh, Mantle channeling, can't remember if we covered this, 25% more damage, 25% damage reduction which is really cool. Rogue in the cube to make up bonuses, wraps of clarity so when we fire off our generator uh, we get 50% damage reduction and then a dawn in the cube for huge vengeance cooldown. Uh, my gloves are a poor piece for me. You want cooldown double crit on there. Uh, you don't need to worry about attack speed, I don't think. But maybe the dream later would be both of those. So attack speed, double crit cooldown. Uh, for your shoulders, you definitely want cooldown. You want perfect cooldown on gloves, perfect cooldown on shoulders. Max cooldown gem in helm. That means that you don't have to take it on weapon or on the quiver because we do get to roughly the 38-39% that we need because the follower uh, is taking the cooldown skill. I don't have a maxed out at 25k ints. That's again something I'm going to build to. That would be a little bit more cooldown because I think this maxes out at 10%. Uh, obviously Nems, Flavor of Time on the follower. And a, a nice Oculus as high to 85% uh, as you can realistically find. Uh, I think think that covers all of the gear we basically just want defensive rolls on you know your chest pants uh boots so dex vitality all res um dex vitality all res if you can get them boots do roll and pale damage very important to get 15 percent on your boots 
Same for the helm, it's very important to get very close to this impale damage of 15% and 6% crit chance. So again, the helm could be improved a little bit, but it's good enough, I think, for me to augment. Uh, for your braces, you want fire and crit chance. Uh, and I think that hopefully now does actually fully conclude the rolls. So I've got a few things I can tidy up, but overall it's it's in pretty good shape. Now you'll see a lot of these 125 augments uh, on here. These are from Echoing Nightmares. I would highly recommend getting them on as soon as possible. It doesn't matter as much with the Guardian set because each augment that you add is not adding as much as it would do normally. Um, you know, if you've got 10k main stat and you put one augment on, it's doing a lot more for you than if you've got 20k main stat and putting an augment on. But it does help with toughness, it does help with damage, so I would recommend it. I'm not going to org these gloves, for instance, because I think I can do better. I'm going to go for double crit cooldown at the very least. Uh, but as soon as I get a nice mantle of channeling, that's going to get augmented. Um, and realistically, it's only if I manage to get a nice Carlays, I can then forge myself a good holy point shot and I'm going to org this up. Uh, rings are always difficult to get ancient with double crits on uh, and damage. And the same for the amulet. You know, this is a very hard item to get double crit socket and fire ancient as well. So, you know, they'll be the pieces that take a bit of time. But with 24k main stat ish, uh, that's, you know, going to be pretty good. So if we get one or two more augments here, uh, we really will be maxing pretty much everything out. So, likely non ancient here, likely non ancient here for the ring, likely non ancient for your offhand, and the same for your bracer. But guardians, you can just keep doing bounties, target farm them. That's fine. And then shards for the rest of the upgrades on the Carlays. Uh, and that should be pretty good. Uh, follower uh, other skills are going to be the uh, extra pool of damage. Doesn't really do terribly much, but we go for it. And then obviously cheat death uh, because that allows us to um, just survive a little bit longer. Now, I do have double cheat death on just in case I do a whoopsie. But if you want to push it a little bit more, uh, you can certainly take this off. You can put on tactical advantage for some more move speed. Put on archery for a little bit more damage. You can put on perfectionist for a bit more access to smoke screen. You can put blood vengeance on to get discipline when you do health globes. You can do leech for a huge amount of sustain. You know, pretty, pretty decent. Uh, hot pursuit, a little bit of move speed. But at the moment, I've gone for the thrill of the hunt, call of the week, that combo to activate the 20%. Ambush to do a bit more damage to high health enemies. And as I say, awareness. With it being laggy as well, uh, this has saved me a few times. Um, but you know, again, a, a potential little thing to play around with. Uh, now, the setup for groups uh, is pretty much exactly the same. But what you're going to do here is you, you will definitely have to take your cheat death in a group game. Uh, you just you can't afford to take it off. But because the support characters will be doing a lot of the slowing for you, you, you can still take the Call of the Week for the 20% extra damage. You don't need to take the Hatred Spender slows. So then you're going to slow, uh, swap off for Blood Vengeance and just help yourself out at a little bit of resource. Aside from that, the build is exactly the same, uh, which is one of the really nice things about it. You don't have to swap around gear. You don't have to uh, worry about changing up any of the skills or anything like that. It's just simply uh, a little passive swap. Uh, which is which is very good uh now skills i think we've covered up pretty much most of them we've done the grenade strafe rocket storm i think this does the most damage um i could be wrong on this i know a lot of people play with drifting shadow but i remember picking up from somebody uh, that rocket storm is the way to go so again that might that might be subject to change shadow power does not matter which rune because we get all of them which is cool uh impale chemical burn the like the tick damage for this is just huge, so it, it is pretty nice. Uh, and you'll you'll use it in groups. Both DHs will take chemical burn. Smoke screen, I go for displacement. Uh the reason for this is because I like the move speed to just get out of trouble if I have to. I know a lot of people go special recipe to reduce the discipline cost because 14 is pretty high. You chunk that down to eight. Uh that is almost half the discipline cost off. And, you know, this can help you keep up your squirts, uh, particularly if you're a good player, you can time this a lot more effectively. I just use it for speed. That's, that's all that I'm using it for. And again, in groups, I think actually it's quite handy to be able to speed yourself up a little bit. Um, but again, that is that is a consideration, the rune on, on that one. Vengeance obviously gives us more damage, gives us 
more toughness with the dark heart rune don't take this one off um it's you know the build is tanky but you, you take one layer of mitigation away you will feel it uh, and you don't need seeth you've, you've got enough hatred uh, recovery you can run out you know don't get me wrong both of these orbs can at some points go empty uh, if you run out of enemies to hit for instance but don't worry they come back fairly fast and as soon as you come across mobs uh, your, your Kale's point will start working for you and it'll start generating hatred back for you and if you're out of discipline well you just can't press smoke screen uh, and that's about it so you know channeling pile will obviously help that out uh, and because you're crushing rifts in three minutes more often than not you're going to have a channeling pile on uh, it, it is going to help considerably uh, right in terms of gameplay as i say it's a very easy one to play uh, when you get into the rift you need to think of the impale button as like an on off switch so you press it to throw it and that's it it's, it's now on it's activated you can just simply strafe and it'll do the damage uh, you need to be getting your extra damage from focus and restraint so 50 percent on the generator 50 percent on the spender every five seconds you need to hit with your generator it's no good just firing it you don't get your bonus um same for the second part second part will obviously be always procced because you're always strafing every five seconds you're looking to to hit with left click that'll give you 50 percent more damage obviously synergizes really well with the raptor clarity because they're on six seconds um so you know you should have that 50 percent damage reduction and extra damage at all times now again if you run out of mobs to hit that is the bonus that can drop off so you need to be looking down here for your little bonus make sure that you've got both sides of focus and restraint up uh, and if you haven't just try and left click on something uh, just direct the fight because 50 percent extra damage it you know is pretty big uh, you want to keep that one going as long as you can aside from that you only need to press shadow power once at the start of the rift uh, and then again if you're going to try and snapshot with the life life uh, hit potion and other than that uh, smoke screen when you need it so you can use it and will you know as much as you want when you've got a channeling pile on pretty much you can use it to get out of danger uh, otherwise apart from that the build feels a little slow if you're used to playing zdh or you're playing uh, god dh a lot uh, it can feel a little slow but you will be surprised it will clunk up the the three minute clears because it's just it's just got such a high damage output as you're rolling around uh blasting things uh i think that pretty much covers it obviously we've got diamonds in the uh, gear for toughness uh, again i wouldn't recommend taking those out going for the dex gems for more damage you won't need it it's not going to make much of an impact and you get much more utility out of the auras gems long term wise i've got a little bit of a crazy idea that it might be worthwhile trying the hexing pants of mr yan uh, i'm not sure if they work on discipline uh, because if they do you would get pretty much the same amount of damage as you would get out of your mantle of channeling you'd lose the damage reduction but you know by the time you get to 2k paragon you're not going to need the damage reduction your, your paragon will sort that for you uh, and if you can, can get an extra 25 percent discipline regeneration uh, i think that could be the way to go so you know you might run it like this with the the shadow shoulders and the hexing pants uh you know in the trouser slot the other option is obviously all guilds so we maybe we transition to all guilds at some point you then take a witching hour belt for more damage so your all guild shoulders and braces witching hour belt uh, and then the rest of the spec is the same it's gonna be quite interesting to see how far we can push this one it, you know it may well do 130 solo speeds at some point um but it's really nice i think as a casual player to have like get yourself up to like a thousand paragon maybe 1200 uh, get your echoing nightmare augments done get your gear tidied up correctly uh, and you will be absolutely blasting 120 uh, and it is a lot of fun hopefully that's covered everything uh, the only other thing to mention i guess is the oculus jump in those oculus circles when you can uh, you know it, it's it's worth it it's 85 percent extra damage is a lot it's much higher damage than the zai so don't worry about being too near if you're in an oculus um you know, just, just go for it basically if you want to get your followers sorted make an intelligence character and take the enchantress and again that's another way of powering up i've still been a little lazy uh haven't got shoulders head uh, weapon or offhand if you wanted to go absolutely ham on your follower you could go for the all skills token and then put her in like all guilds uh you know uh, head and shoulders or chest and shoulders uh, or maybe bones shoulder weapon 
maybe augment those things up so that she survives at 120, uh, 125 without the cannot die token. Uh, and that would allow you access to attack speed, a little bit of uh, reduced damage itself, and also the static elemental damage. I'm not sure if it's worth going to all that trouble just to eke those little bonuses out. Um, but again, if you want to, I guess you could. Right, so that has been the guide. I'm sorry the game is uh, really laggy for me at the moment, so I'm not going to take it for a spin because it's just going to be a hideous experience. But I will leave a rift clear at the end on 119. Uh, and as I say, final time, 123 in under four minutes. Uh, that's the only 123 I've done. Admittedly, hands up, it was faster in woods. Um, but it does show the, the absolute ridiculous power uh, that this this build has. Right, I hope you enjoyed the video. I've been the Filthy Casual. Take it easy. Peace.